Hello and welcome. My name is Bert Willems. I'm the CTO at Fonto. Um, for those who don't know that name, Fonto is the technology that underpins Tridian uh, draft space and Tridian review space. And today I'll be talking to you uh, about keeping track of the organization-wide comments in review space. So let's go with the agenda real quick. First, we'll be talking about the different use cases and challenges that you may face when uh, when working with a large uh, number of reviewers. I'll give you a brief overview of what uh, a trader and review space actually is uh, for those who don't know that. Um, and finally, we'll dive a little bit into the architecture that drives all of the, the use cases that we support in uh, trader and review space. So what are some of the use cases and challenges we see when it comes specifically to reviewing documents? Well, the, the most basic scenario that we uh, that we see is basically you have one author and one reviewer. Think about it in terms of a Word file. There's typically one person writing that Word file. Maybe they send it at some point in time, send it to their over to their colleague. The colleague will use the built-in commenting feature of Word in order to provide feedback. Uh, and they will send it back to the author for addressing of that uh, of the feedback that the reviewer provided. A slightly more complex use case is if there's not just a single uh, reviewer, but there is actually a whole group of them. And in fact, it cannot be. Uh, it's not necessarily one group. It can actually be a whole bunch of groups. So, uh, for example, uh, what we typically see in, in larger organizations is that maybe the marketing team needs to uh, review a particularly new document before it's uh, uh, published. Uh, but the technical staff probably also needs to take a look at that. And perhaps the legal staff needs to be involved in the review process as well. Um, a typical example where we see this maybe is in uh, in standardization. So if you think about it in terms of uh, ISO, the, you know the, the the standardization organization, uh, then what happens that is that they uh, produce a new draft of a of new standard. That draft is then sent through all the members of ISO. That can be just up to one hundred and fifty five or something along those lines. Um, but each of those members, so think about it in terms of a country, actually has experts that need to review as well. And it can be dozens or even hundreds of experts per country. Um, and if you add all those numbers together, then you end up with a large volume of potential reviewers that need to review those documents. So one of the key challenges that we faced when we designed the whole uh, Twitter and review space application is is the ability to scale between those two use cases right so on the one hand we have a very simple uh, use case uh where we just have one reviewer and on the other hand we have uh, potentially hundreds or even thousands of reviewers all needing to review the same document and up until this point, I talked about reviewing a single document, but as you may know, uh, Tridian supports structured content. Um, and that means that we're not just talking about one actual document, but perhaps a document that's composed of, I don't know, anywhere up to a thousand or maybe 10,000 different components, right? So uh, that makes it a lot more complex to review because for example, you need to deal with scenarios where things like conditional content, so maybe the content is set up in such a way that for a particular audience, they see one version of the document while another version uh, is presented to a different audience. All of that needs to be taken into account while reviewing um, a structured document. And then an important aspect that we typically see when we're talking about these more complex document formats is the ability to do review in parallel. And what that means is that um, that is not just one reviewer doing review, it hands it off to the next one, um, and that person does their work, and then hands it off to the next one. But instead, all of those people will do the review at the same time in the same document. 
Well, to, to summarize a little bit on the use cases and the challenges, the review processes may differ widely between different organizations. And in fact, it can happen that uh, even one organization or one company, in fact, has multiple review processes. Maybe they start off with a small one and then expand to the uh, larger audiences. So we need to have a system um, that can scale between all of those workflows and all of those amounts of users involved. So that's definitely an important part of what uh, training review space does. We talked a little bit about the sequential versus the parallel reviews, so the ability to do things in parallel in order to speed up the, the, the process. What we haven't really talked about yet is the uh, privacy requirements around commenting. Um, so it may be the case that in your particular workflow, um, the original author uh, should not even know who provided the comment, right? It can be the case that it needs to be anonymized, for example, and uh, for the Trillion Review Space application is set up to deal with those scenarios as well. Document approval is, of course, an important aspect. And as you may know, Trillion Docs has uh, extensive capabilities to control the approval of uh, individual topics as well as entire publications. Traceability is also important. So that, that means that at all points in time, you should be able to exactly know what was commented and also how was that comment dealt with? Was, the, was maybe the change that was proposed by the reviewer, was that accepted in the document or was that rejected? All of that information needs to be captured and stored securely in the database for uh, audit purposes. On the other hand, we need to make sure that the system is intuitive to use. If you think about those hundreds of reviewers that potentially work with the system, they may not necessarily need to review a document every single day. So it may be that they only review a document maybe once a year or something like that, right? Um, so that means that the system needs to be intuitive because you simply cannot train uh, that amount of people. Efficiency, we talked a lot about, uh, we talked about the traceability, we talked about flexibility in terms of the different use cases and scalability also in terms of performance are all critical factors that went into, into the design of the Trillion Review Space application. So what, what is exactly Review Space for those who haven't seen that before? So Review Space is a secure online environment to control and manage all, specs, all aspects of collaborative document review. Collaborative is an important keyword here. Um, that means that, uh, that, that, first of all, that reviewers need to be able to work in parallel, but also there are interactions possible between the reviewer and the author. For example, if, if a particular comment is not clear, there should be an ability to communicate with the reviewer in order to ask for clarification. Um, as we talked about, it should support large-scale comment gathering. Um, it should be efficient when it comes to processing that comment, right? So if you think about uh, having a large document with a large, uh, large amount of reviewers, you can also imagine that there will be a lot of comments and a lot of feedback coming in. And we need to make sure that uh, as an author, you would need to go over to all those uh, comments and address them. So perhaps make changes or reject them or whatever it is. All of that needs to be very efficient. And the final one, uh, the comments are uh, separated from the content. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that in the whole architecture of uh, the system. So let's let's look at the uh, review space in more detail. So basically, the application is split into two main parts. One, uh, the first part is called comment gathering, as we typically. That is actually the user interface that is used by reviewers to review a document. They have the ability to uh, provide comments by just simply putting their cursor in the document on the words or the image or the table or whatever it is um, and start typing a comment. So that's a, a very similar to the way a system like Word or Google Docs would allow you to provide comments. 
Another neat feature that uh, that we have implemented is that you, as a reviewer, are able to provide a suggestion. Maybe you see some wording that you don't agree to, um, and instead of just writing a comment, you can actually provide a suggestion um, to uh, improve that wording. And as mentioned, we spend a lot of time to make this system really intuitive, uh, also including some onboarding messages, stuff like that. So it's very easy uh, for reviewers to use without uh, any specific guidance or training uh, required. The second part of, uh, of review space is the ability to address this. And what I mean by that is as an author, you'll see the feedback that has been given to your document um, and you should be able to determine whether you wanna incorporate that feedback or whether you wanna say, well, I think it's a fair point that you're making, but uh, no, thank you. Um, the actual addressing happens inside draft space. Draft space is actually the, the editor, if you will, in which you, uh, which you author the document. And the reason for that is that uh, is of course, because you wanna make some changes in the document. For an author to, to efficiently deal with a large number of comments, we provide facilities around the uh, filtering and searching for comments. Um, and more importantly, the comments are all displayed contextually. So they're really pointing to the specific location in the document to which the feedback uh, applies. So let's talk a little bit about the, the architecture of the system. And in order to understand that, I'll explain a little bit of what our competitors do in this space. Uh, for example, again, Microsoft Word, um, they traditionally store the comments inside the content. Um, in XML editing solutions, we typically see that these are stored as either processing instructions or perhaps even XML elements. And that basically means that you require a sequential workflow, right? Because only one user can edit an XML document at the same time. Um, so that, that would slow down the, the system quite a lot. And also a common uh, flaw with these kinds of implementations that if you accept a comment, any trace of that information is lost. Sure, if you have a version management system, it's still there, but you need to go back and look at an older version in order to understand what uh, happened to a particular comment. What we do is quite differently. We store the comments separate from the content. So it means it's separately stored in the database and that uh, prevents the entire uh, locking problem that I just talked about um, and thus enable the parallel reviewing. It also, since it's stored in, uh, yeah, in a separate database, the information is never lost. It's always there securely stored in the database. And the way that that works is that uh, we have a uh, model where we basically, uh, well, like, like I said, we store the comments in uh, a separate database, but each comment has a position pointing to the exact location in the content. So it's basically pointing towards, I don't know, maybe a specific word or a sentence, the table, what have you. These pointers are uh, stored as XPath expressions. Um, that's just uh, an easy and convenient way because the, the content in our case is always in terms of data XML content. But for, for those of you who have a little bit of understanding of what XML is and what these pointers are, um, what can happen in these situations is that uh, the position of the comment is no longer there. Maybe an author inserts a new paragraph, right? Um, just before the, the paragraph where a comment was placed. That would mean that the pointer would actually start point to the wrong paragraph now, right? So we have this disconnection problem, um, or as we sometimes call it, the positions can get out of sync. Well, and you're right, that was one of the architectural challenges that we, uh, that we faced. But um, since this application has been shipping for quite a while now, uh, we managed to solve this problem and I will tell you how we actually did that. So the way that the 
that we solve this problem is that we don't have a single position for a comment in a document, but we actually have that for each revision of the document. So for each revision, we know exactly where that particular comment applied. So even if a new paragraph is created, which you can see in the 2.0 document uh, at the bottom of the screen, the, the first line is, is new, if you will, or the first two lines I should say in this diagram um, to signal that some new content was introduced. Some new paragraphs were inserted in version 2.0 of this document. And now the question, of course, is, but wait, if I'm in version one, I understand that the position is still correct, but how would the system know what where the position is in version two to We actually have two mechanisms to deal with that. Remember uh, that I mentioned that uh, we're also the author or the creators of the Tridian draft space, which is basically the editor. So one key component of this architecture is what we call active position tracking, where the editor continuously updates those positions. So while I start typing into uh, in the document, for example, I press enter to create a new paragraph, um, we continuously calculate the new positions um, of the comments, and we store that with every single revision or version of that particular uh, XML file that's being offered. But that is not always possible. So for example, uh, imagine a case where content is modified outside of draft space. Uh, maybe there is some XSLT that's, uh, that's being run automatically. Maybe it's, uh, it's authored in a, in a desktop-based XML editor. Um, and in those cases, you would still end up with, uh, with disconnected positions. And in order to tackle that problem, we implemented uh, what we call position recovery. And what position recovery is, is a clever algorithm called FDIF that basically computes the differences between two versions of an XML file. So it really determines the changes uh, based on the two separate XML files. That comparison then results in what we call an edit script. And an edit script is basically a set of instructions. So insert this paragraph is such an example, or type these characters at this particular location. So it basically is a written uh, recipe, if you will, that if you follow that recipe, it transforms the, the original version of the content to the version that you're comparing it to. And what uh, the edit script is then used to update the, or basically compensate for the new position. So what happens is we're basically playing that edit script um, on top of the positions that we already have and figure out where the new positions should end up in the new version of the document. One key problem with that approach that we encountered uh, was that um, it was or it used to be based on identifiers, um, so ID attributes, if you will, that existed on the content. Um, however, um, as our research showed, those identifiers are quite unstable. So what 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 users are quite messy when they reorganize the documents. So for example. If you select a paragraph in, in an editor, maybe Word like uh, or something like that, right? And you want to move that, what do you do? Do you select the entire element, so the P element, including the attributes, or you're just making a selection in text, cut the text, make, a, make some space, ergo, you create a new paragraph uh, somewhere else, and then you paste the content in there, right? In those mechanisms, it's very hard to guarantee that the ID remains the same. And another example that traditional diffing algorithms have is that if you press enter within a paragraph element, right? So in the middle of the paragraph, you press enter. You're basically splitting the paragraph into two parts. 
But which of those parts have the idea? Well, you don't know that, right? So what FDIF does is something different. We're actually not using any identifiers at all. Uh, we really look at the actual content of the, the, the textual content of the paragraph, because that is also what an author is looking at. And what FDIF does is basically figure out what an author uh, does. And based on that, update the positions again. So as you can imagine, quite some engineering went into implementing that diffing algorithm altogether. And even um, that may not always necessarily result into a valid position. So for example, if I have a sentence like the lazy cat jumped over uh, the fox, um, what may happen is that the author actually copy and pasted it not just once to a different location, but actually multiple times. And now it becomes ambiguous which of those, uh, I don't know, two copies is the actual intended target, right? Um, and, and there are some more scenarios that I won't go, if, uh, go into detail right now, uh, but there are multiple, multiple scenarios where we cannot we, we simply cannot determine the position anymore. So in those uh, scenarios, the position would still be lost. However, um, we managed to solve this um, on a more user experience level. Um, and that is by means of the, what we call the show in original context feature. And what the show original context feature allows an author to do is basically to travel back in time and look at the document through uh, at the moment. So it, they, they can look at the document as it was uh, at the time of what the reviewer saw. So, so basically they go back in time, see what the reviewer saw. And of course that element or the content on which the comment applies must mm -hmm. exist there, right? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot just go back in time and, and, and change uh, old content, if you will. Well. To summarize, um, review space is designed to work with a lot of different workflows, whether it's a very simple one uh, where you have one uh, author and a reviewer, um, all the way to those very complex uh, review scenarios that we see in, for example, standardization. We observe that parallel reviews are actually required for efficiency reasons. And there's a whole bunch of uh, stories I can tell um, about why uh, efficiency is important. But of course, uh, I think I can summarize by saying, in the end, time is money. And the sooner you can get your documents to market, the better, I would say. As you saw in the architecture section, we store comments separately from content. That causes the whole problems about the ability for positions to come out of sync and that's where we uh, update, we implemented position tracking uh, to solve the positioning problem. And we looked at the stopgap, even if all those clever algorithms that we implemented did not work, uh, which may happen in, in certain specific scenarios uh, with the time traveling feature that, uh, that I quickly showed you. So that concludes my presentation. Um, I will quickly and go look here to see if there are any questions so far. So give me a second to switch to my other screen. Right, so um, I don't think there is any questions, but there's one remark that, it, that I want to talk about that also has something to do that uh, ships with, a, uh, with the recent version of Trillion Docs, and that's the ability to see uh, what conditions apply to uh, to content. So what we recently did is add the ability for authors to see the conditions of the content. So you can imagine that you have content that is written for two separate audiences. Um, one audience see maybe one, uh, well, maybe that's the basic introduction to something, and maybe another audience gets like a more advanced or a more technical um, uh, technical representation of the document. And in front of review, you are able to, uh, to see through the eyes of that audience. So as a reviewer, uh, you'll be able to see either the simplified content 
or the, uh, the, the more advanced content, depending on uh, your role and depending on what you're tasked to review. So that's, that's hopefully coming to a Tridian uh, Docs instance uh, near you quite quickly. I think that's it in terms of the questions that we have today. Of course, if there are any uh, remaining questions, you can always reach, uh, reach out to me um, or to any of the RWS employees uh, that you are in touch with. Get all the feedback that you have to, uh, to us. I will see if we can, uh, we, can, we can answer your questions. So for now, I would like to thank you and uh, please enjoy your uh, follow-up sessions here on the Trillion Developers Summit. Thank you.